right, so we are going to discuss lesson 1.03, which is also on the 1.04 quiz, and we are finally getting into some gas laws. So gas laws are math. All right, so I'm going to take you through each of these. We'll practice them and just kind of give you the tools to get through the word problems associated with this sort of stuff. So here is a really important table. Um, these are your equations, kind of what's going on here, how these variables are related to each other, and what you can do with them. So first off, we've got Boyle's Law, and according to Boyle's Law, pressure times volume is always equal to a constant value. This second equation, all right, is when you, because pressure times volume is always a constant, if you have a starting pressure and volume, and then you make changes to one of those things, all right, the new pressure times volume still has to equal the original one. So this is an equation that you use when you have a problem like, oh, you have a pressure of one atmosphere, a gas at a pressure of one atmosphere that's two liters in volume, and you decrease the pressure by half, what happens is volume, all right? So it's these second equations that are most useful when it comes to actually solving problems. All right, and the ones and the twos are not actually numbers that you multiply. I apologize, these should all be subscripts. So it's like P1, V1, so pressure one, so the initial pressure times the initial volume is equal to the final pressure, which is P2, times the final volume. All right, but we'll, we'll look at that when we get to an actual sample problem. Other questions that won't be math-based might have you zone in on kind of the relationship that's going on here. All right, so pressure and volume, and we kind of already talked about this on the last one. When you decrease the volume of a gas, you compress it by increasing its pressure. All right, so pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. As one increases, the other one decreases. Whereas for Charles and Gay Lussac's laws, those variables have direct relationships, which means you know, as one increases, the other increases. All right, couple of things when using these equations. There are certain things that must be assumed to be constant. All right, so you can use Boyle's Law as long as it's just pressure and volume changing. Mass and temperature need to re remain the same. All right, a lot of times you'll end up seeing that one of these things are listed as constant. All right. And then, obviously, based on the equations, the variables that you see in there, P stands for pressure, you can solve for pressure, and volume V. All right? Or Charles' law, you can solve for, you can use that when dealing with volume and temperature. P stands for temperature. And Gay Lussac's is pressure and temperature. So let's look at a problem. All right. So we have a pump at 0.2 liters of air at 403 kPa. You draw back on the piston in the pump, piston of the pump until the pressure reads 205 kPa. What is the volume of air in the pump? So what I have on here is just a general kind of thought process you wanna go through when solving these. First, identify what you know, all right? And that's where you go, you go look and you look at the numbers that you are given. So we've got 0.2 liters, 403 kPa, 205 kPa, all right? Liters is volume, all right, so that's gonna be our V1. And 403 kPa, that's kilopascals, so that's gonna be our pressure, all right, and that's tied with this volume, so that'll be pressure one. And then here, we draw back on the piston until the pressure reads 205, so this is, we're changing the pressure. We know pressure two, all right. And then we identify what we need to solve for. The question is, what is the volume? So V2 is our question. All right, so we have changing pressure and volume. This is a Boyle's Law problem. All right, so we've got P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Now, I'm just gonna plug my numbers in. So P1 is 403, P2 
is 0 0.2. And that's going to be equal to, or sorry, V1 is 0 0.2. P2 is 205. And I'm solving for V2. All right. So I am going to simplify things. So 403 times 0 0.02 is 80.6 equals 205 times V2. Now I need to solve for that V2. All right. So since it's 205 times volume 2, to move it to the other side, I have to divide. I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication. Divide by both sides. That's going to cancel the 205. And then it'll be 80.6 divided by 205. And my new volume is 0 0.39 liters. All right. So let's practice this with a few more. Next one is you have 1.5 liters of air at 273 Kelvin in an expandable container that allows a constant pressure. You heat the container to 473 Kelvin. What is the volume of air? All right. So. I know 1.5 liters, I know 273 Kelvin, I know 473 Kelvin. So looking over the problem, the 1.5 and the 273 are related to each other, that's what I start with. So liters is volume, Kelvin is a temperature unit, so I, there's my V1 and T1. And then I'm going to change the temperature, so my T2 is the 473, and then what I need to solve for is what's the volume of air. So V2 is my question mark. So I've got temperature and volume in here. Charles Law is going to help here. So that's our V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. All right, I'm starting to run out of space here. So let me start plugging in numbers. V1 was 1.5 liters divided by T1, which is 273. It's already in Kelvin, so I'm good. And that's going to be equal to V2 over 473 Kelvin. So let me simplify 1.5 divided by 273 equal to 0 0.0055 it's equal to v2 divided by 473 now to get v2 all by itself I've got to do the opposite of dividing by 473 so I'm going to multiply by 473 I'm going to do that to both sides so take that 0 0.055 times 473 and you get 2.6 liters. All right. So this next, definitely, if you haven't been doing this already, pause before we get going. See if you can do this on your own. And then come back and see if you got it right. All right. So we've got 7 liters of gas in a fixed volume container at two atmospheres and 200 Kelvin. The temperature is increased to 300 Kelvin. What will the pressure be? So let's look at what we know. We have seven liters of gas, two atmospheres, 200 Kelvin, and 300 Kelvin. Um, so I could say that this gas, the volume is V1, but then if I look at this here, fixed volume. That means volume is staying constant. So really, I don't got to worry about this. It's a number thrown in there to maybe throw you off a little. So let's focus on the other ones. We are starting at two atmospheres. Atmospheres is pressure. 
and 200 Kelvin, which is temperature. And we're going to go to 300 Kelvin. All right. And then the question is, what will the pressure be? So P2 is our question mark. So this is a Gay-Lussac problem. All right. Make this smaller, give us some more room. So this is a P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. All right, so I've got two over 200 equals P2 over 300. All right. 2 divided by 200, should have been able to do that in my head, 0 0.01 equals P2 over 300. To move the 300, I'm going to multiply both sides, that is multiply, by 300. So that's going to cancel those, that should be 3. So our new pressure is going to be 3 atmospheres. Right. If you weren't sure where I was getting the units from, since P1 was in atmospheres, P2 is going to be in atmospheres too. So, if you are finding these challenging, come to help. We can do some extra problems.